I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the recap of the May 2023 Chemnitz Dialogue live stream. This month I picked a fun photo of wildflowers where we had bright reddish orange blossoms, pink, blue, and a field with bright greenery. Sometimes when I am looking at a flower or really any kind of nature inspiration photo, I ignore the greenery and focus on something else because I'll be honest, almost all of these pictures have a lot of green in them. But today I really wanted to pull that green into our whole experience. So during the live stream, I pulled a number of different acid dye colors but then settled on sour apple for the greenery. I thought that this more brighter yellow green would work much better than emerald. And then I added cayenne red, tangelo, sapphire blue, and pink orchid. And I knew I wanted to create colorways that felt a little bit abstract, a little bit impressionistic. And so we did two main colorways and two yarn mops. For the first colorway, I used Knit Picks Swish DK. This yarn is 100% Superwash Merino wool. And I used all five colors to give us some super chunky speckles. And really just adding some of these colors, trying to use more green than some of the other colors on here. I just love the way that all of these colors have come together on here. I think when you're looking closely, it can be challenging to differentiate between the Tangelo and the Cayenne, but the fact that they are so close, because really in the inspiration photo, we're seeing like the light shining through, it's like two different views of the same flower. I think that gives much more dimension to the yarn than had I just used one or the other of these colors. I really like with speckling, having colors that are ultimately a little bit close together uh, versus just picking ones that are super distinct. Because we did countertop speckles, we were able to maintain some more of the white from our yarn base. Had I been doing this, say, low immersion, that would have been harder to do. Not necessarily worse, but just harder. And when you compare the finished yarn here to what the yarn looked like while I was dyeing it, the blues and the pinks, and the blues I used the least amount of, really come through so much more than they did during the dyeing process. Our first yarn mop from the stream, this one is also on Swish DK. Uh, if you want to learn more about the yarn bases, I will have Knit Picks affiliate links down in the video description. But I started off just sort of wiping those colors from the countertop directly onto this yarn. And the way that those five colors worked in larger patches was so beautiful that this really inspired what I wanted to do for our second round of colors, which I will get to. Now, when I use the phrase yarn mop, what I'm referring to is an extra skein of yarn that I use to wipe up excess dye. So at first, as I mentioned, the skein of yarn was one that I used to wipe off excess dye powder off of my gloved fingertips, so that way I wouldn't contaminate the dye from different jars. But also I didn't wanna wipe my gloved fingertips onto our speckled colorway because that would have spread out some of these speckles more and that wasn't the effect I was going for. But once I went to go steam set our yarn, I had dye on the countertop and I wanted to use this yarn mop to help soak up that dye that was left on the countertop. And so by wiping up all of these colors and sort of rubbing them through this yarn mop, things became a lot muddier. And so here I'll show a picture of the yarn mop before wiping the counter and then after. And so you can see that it blends those colors together a lot more. And I do still really like this. It's muddier, it's softer, it's almost like blurred, like you're focusing on something in the front and so the colors in the back are a bit blurred. But I wanted to try to achieve what this looked like before wiping the counter, and so that's what I did for our next colorway. And this is what I created. The yarn base we used here was Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn, 75% Superwash Merino Wool, 25% Nylon. 
And frequently when I'm doing that yarn mop technique, if I want to do it on purpose, I dip my fingers into the powder, wipe a lot of it off, and then randomly wipe it onto the yarn, similar to what I had done for that original skein in, that I showed previously. But the downside of that is that I either want to take a bunch of powder out of jars, so that way I'm not going in and out of the dye stock containers, or I have to be wiping and drying my hands over and over. So what I did here was I took little bits of the powder and sort of put them on randomly on the yarn, and then I came and tapped it in and spread it out and wiped it. So the patches are not quite as random as they would be if it was an actual yarn mop, but we're still getting some of those like pops of color and some of that randomness. It's kind of feeling is evoked in this yarn. This yarn mop, the colors are overall a lot softer. I forget if I decided to do some immersion technique for this in the end. I don't think I did because I think I just had steamer baskets going. But it's softer because when I was tapping the dye into our main yarn, I didn't have as much color on my fingertips when I went over to the yarn mop. And there was also less dye on the countertop because I was tapping things into the yarn and so the yarn was soaking up a lot of that versus having dye powder that fell on the countertop staying on the countertop. And so, yeah, we just have less pigment here. And so here are the four different colorways that I dyed as part of the May 2023 Chemnitz Dye Along livestream. Now, sometimes when I dye a colorway, the yarn mop is something that feels super different and like it could coordinate really well with the main colorway. This time, there is a lot of similarity between them, and sure, you could incorporate these together, but I don't have the ooh, awesome set vibe as much as I do other times, mainly because this is so similar, but just a more pastel version, and so that could work depending on what else you were doing, but I think you would want something else. And this one also definitely could be blended with the speckles, but I think that you know, this is a better combination where the colors are brighter and a little bit cleaner. But that's just my personal opinion as far as did we make an accidental colorway set here today or not. But now it's time for my favorite part of the Chemnitz Dye Long Recaps. And it's time to take a look at some of the yarn that you dyed inspired by the same photo. Did you decide to just focus on the blossoms? Or really, did you focus on just the leaves? There's no reason why you have to use every color that is in the inspiration photo. But you give one photo to a bunch of dyers and you're gonna see a lot of different techniques and final colorways. Thank you so much to everyone who participated and joined along to dye along with me. If you would like your work to be featured in upcoming Chemnitz Dye Along Recaps, just share the colorways that you dyed inspired by the inspiration photo on Instagram using the Chemnitz Dye Along hashtag or reply to the inspiration photo that is pinned on the Chemnitz Facebook page. Typically, I would say if you submit your pictures before the 10th of the following month, then I will be able to include it in the video. I aim to get the video out around or before the 15th of the following month to give everyone time to dye up their yarn, but sometimes there are delays. And so as long as I haven't exported the video yet, I will try to include as many pictures as I can. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And are there inspirations that you would like to see coming up? I know I pull from nature a lot, but we have done the occasional movie and things like that. And well, since June, well, it's in June now, I, I think you have an idea of what kind of palette I'm going to draw from for the June Chemnitz dye -along. Uh, I typically try to use that dye -along also as a fundraiser for the Trevor Project, but that is something that I will talk more about uh, when I release the inspiration photo and do that dye -along. Subscribing is the biggest way you can help support the content here, but there are other things you can do to help support the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. And I have a Patreon and an Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations, where all of my hand-dyed yarn eventually ends up. And so you can find links to all of that down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.